Prep Rally Podcast. Got to get that one in this week. Email us at hss at 9570game.com and be featured on the Prep Rally Podcast. Why is it important? We want to highlight you. We want to highlight your kids. Baseball, softball, track and field. It's all going down right now. We need updates, though. What's happening in WCAL, AAA, MCAL, East Bay uh, Athletic League? What's happening in the OAL? We want to know about all that. Email us at hss. 95, or excuse me, yeah, HSS at 9570game.com. Shasky, Kings Warriors. I'm pretty we excited. Actually, we actually got it. We actually got the series. I know. I'm pretty excited. In the season that we, in which we feel like as Warrior fans, haven't gotten a lot of things. We got Kings Warriors. Pretty cool. What's the vibe over at NBC? Because you guys are broadcasting both the Kings and the Warriors over yeah. there. So there's a lot of cross oh, every, Everybody's happy. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of fun yesterday at NBC uh, Sports Bay Area because you had the A's, Giants, Kings, and Warriors play. So you had the whole crew there. Mo was there uh, for producer Mo's show. Uh, Kenny Thomas was in the building. Oh, nice. And he was saying, I don't know if we want the Warriors. We'll so, see about that. So he was being realistic. It was being realistic. He did see us like to be by Friday night as well yeah. in Warrior Colors. I, was Festus out at the Giants game on Friday? He think he was. Yeah, because a bunch of my buddies had ran into him, and I saw some photos. Yeah. And uh, I guess they were starstruck. Catch, Festus is catching a vibe. Yeah. He, lo he loved his time at opening day. Oh, wow. Big strike zone for Festus if yeah. he got into baseball. Yeah, no doubt. No, doubt. no it's good to see him out there. He's become a fixture in the community. No doubt. No, he's a really good Festus, you know. A lot of people were joking last week, you know, oh, man, Bonte didn't have Dibs and Willard back. He's not a good teammate. Well, Festus is my teammate. And Festus, as a human being, is a hell of a dude. What he does in his community with the yoga and speaking, speaking engagements, what he does for women, like, Festus is a good dude, man. Very good dude. He's like a Donald Foyle. He's a new age of Donald Foyle. You know? I Nothing love the there. Donald Foyle. Yeah, that's all. Just give him my guys Were you a love. part of the reading club? I wish I was. Yeah. I wish I was. A Donald, great guy. All right. Oh. Does he still have that blocks record? Is he still all time leader in Warrior Blocks? Yeah, I believe so. Still? Still. Draymond's got to be somewhere near there, right? Still to this day. Still to this day. Foil will block shots. Uh, Madeline Kitty, was she ever part of a reading club? Of course, she's with the Bay Area News Group. She covers the Go to State Warriors. Saw her out there bowling in Portland. She's having the time of her oh, life. Bowling. Covering the Go to State. Yeah. You know what they say about bowling? What they say when about When all that? the other activities you've done and you're looking for something to do on a raining day, then you go to bowling. Hey, I don't, how'd you bowl? Hey, that's exactly why we, we did bowling. <laughs> yeah, how, how'd you do bowling, Madeline? How, how was your bowling game Saturday? A 270? You, you know what? Yeah. Uh, started off a little bit rough. There was a stretch, though, where I think I got back-to-back -back strikes and a spare. And then I think I did, like, five straight gutters. So not not my best performance, but something that we can build off of. Oh, right. yeah. No Madeline, doubt. now I have to ask a couple questions. Number one, do you use the air blower dryer thing for the fingers? And number two, are you bowling straight or are you throwing it with, with the curve with a little English? Um, if I'm dr throwing it with a curve, it's not intentional. But that definitely <laughs> did happen a few times. <laughs> yeah, my, my bowling game stinks, Madeline. I'm you not a good bowler. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good at all. A lot of gutter balls in my game. Uh, follow her at Mad Kitty on Twitter. She does a great job covering the Golden State Warriors. You How refreshing. left -handed? Yeah, left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. But I do like the Fred Foot so Twinkle Toes right oh, yeah, before yeah, you get to the, the line. Toes. And I let yeah, it's, I don't it's, understand it's why I have to use their shoes, though, but that's neither here nor yeah, there. Yeah, I know. Just let me bowl in my shoes. Yeah, my shoes have better traction. Think about how disgusting that is, too, Madeline. Post-pandemic, post we're all rocking the same shoes. And disgusting. God, yeah, it is disgusting when you think about it. It's disgusting. And, and they also aren't, like, fashionable. Like, you would think, no. by, it's 2023, and why am I wearing these dorky Velcro shoes that <laughs> they could totally upgrade them? They're from, like, early 2000s. Let's Let's get some new bowling shoes. Yeah, seriously. Let's upgrade that. Let's evolve in the bowling world. Uh, Madeline, how refreshing <laughs> is it that we're finally to the into the playoffs after this roller coaster, I guess, tumultuous regular season? Steve Kerr called it tumultuous. I mean, it's been a, uh, dating back to post-Tokyo in training camp, but now we finally made it to the postseason. How refreshing is it for you as a beat writer? It feels, I, I can only imagine how great it feels for the players, but it feels great as a beat reporter that like we finally made it through 82 games this is my first full 82 game slate too so i think that was like a grind within itself but also just with how up and down this season has been 
the road and home discrepancy that was kind of unexplainable at times. Um, it, it, it feels so good to be to kind of have this week off to regroup personally um, before heading into, you know, a potential run. We'll see how far they go. Uh, I'm kind of optimistic now. Uh, I, I kind of was joking that I gave up positivity for okay. Lent, but now that Easter is over, I can be positive again. So nice. I'm, feeling, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic uh, for the Warriors in this postseason. I know. We kind of opened the show today. It's like, all right, they have a 44-38 and 38 record. They're sixth place. But if you look at like the way the season played itself out, all things being considered, they're right where they need to be. Like they've got a favorable matchup in terms of like it's not the biggest juggernaut that provides all these personnel issues. Steph missed 26 games. Wiggins missed 45 games. Clay played in almost 70 games this year and was awesome. Like all these Kamingas coming on. They've got the top eight guys all feeling healthy, and that doesn't even include uh, Wiggins, who's now returning. They're right where they need to be, right, Madeline? It just seems like everything is finally starting to come together because even when you look at they won eight of their last 10 games with that Denver loss, they did show signs of life within the last four minutes. Mm. They rallied back from being down by double figures um, to cut it close. And so it, it just seems like everything is finally starting to click for them. Um, and, and plus, you, Dante DiVincenzo is another one that he's been shooting the ball really well. Mm. Um, he's kind of been doing everything. I think he had like five steals last night. Uh, just a great stat line from yep. him. And, and then when you start to look at it, too, like Jordan Poole has been kind of has been taking better care of the ball. He's been shooting it better, uh, making better decisions. It, it just seems like everything is kind of starting to come together. And even when you start to, you know, think about a nine-man rotation, the Warriors have a pretty, it, it seems like a pretty stacked nine-man rotation. Yeah. No, you're right. Madeline Kitty here uh, from the Bay Area News Group does a great job covering the Golden State Warriors, her first full season on the beat, at Mad Kitty on Twitter. You're right. Shasky brought that up. It was like, you know, you got eight trusted guys, and the unknown right now is Andrew Wiggins. Well, I feel it pretty good if Andrew Wiggins is the unknown. I know he's been scrimmaging and progressing. I know he traveled to Golden State Warriors, but you hit on it. DiVincenzo now found his groove. GP2 is now locked in. And Jonathan Kaminga and where his game is at, it feels like last year, last postseason, that was Jordan Poole's coming out party. This mm -hmm. season, it feels like it could be Jonathan Kaminga's coming out party. I think he's the ultimate X factor for this team moving forward. I, I totally agree with you. Um, and, and even when you just look at like where Kaminga was at the beginning of the season versus now, I mean, he was picking up BMPs really early on and was frustrated just because he felt like, you know, he, he should be out there playing and getting an opportunity. And then when he finally did get that opportunity, you know, I think he had a few talks with some of the coaches and Andre Guadalla, and they told him, like, look, the scoring will come. We know you can score. You don't have to prove that to us or don't focus on that right now. It'll come. But just focus on the defensive end because that's where you're going to make your impact. And he mm -hmm. did that, and he locked in, and he's made great strides defensively um, just with his overall awareness and, like, where he needs to be and win and – and I, it, it's been really fun to watch his growth this year. And you also have to remember, he's only 20, 20 years old. Yeah. Like, there's just so much potential with him still. Like, his ceiling is so high. So if he's already, you know, showing flashes of this, you know, star potential early on, like he has this season. And depending on what he does in the playoffs, I mean, he just has a bright future, it seems. No doubt. Hey, real quick on Wiggins. Where is he at? I know he's been scrimmaging 5-on-5. Five five. He traveled with the team. What's your guess with him? You think he's going to start? Is he going to come off the bench? Where do you think he'll be at by the time we uh, Saturday five thirty rolls around? Yeah, I think that's kind of the biggest question right now, um, and and whether he'll be cleared to play by the first first game. I think he will be ready to play. Uh, I I could see them potentially bring him off the bench, kind of like Steph last year um, in the first round, just to kind of you know he's going to most likely be under minutes restriction. That might be the best use of his time. Also, the starting lineup has synergy and chemistry with Dante DiVincenzo in it. Do you really disturb that to bring, you know, Dante DiVincenzo, or, excuse me, Andrew Wiggins back in game one? Um, I know that that's something that they're going to work on and focus this week in practice, uh, getting those guys all reacclimated, getting Wiggins back up to speed. And so he could very well start, but I, I could see them, you know, bringing him in off the bench. All right. What was your low water mark for the regular season and high water mark? Ooh, um, I, my low and high low would probably be, I think it was that blowout loss in Brooklyn. Mm. Uh, oh, that's a I good one. Like that was 
rock bottom. Good it call. just seemed like I don't even think they had a road win at that point. It was just it was uh yeah, they gave up ninety one points in the first half of that game. That's right. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Like and that was I think the most and a half this season by any team. <laughs> um it was it was just ugly. Um so I would say that was probably the low point. And high point, um you know, Clay's had some really big games. Uh which is, I feel like it's always fun to see him kind of have some success, especially just because of everything that he's been through. Um, and I think even just, you know, yesterday probably, knowing that they finally secured a playoff spot yeah. and they don't have to mess with the play-in tournament, I think that probably, that might be the high point because it, it's all over. None, nothing that happened in the regular season matters as much as, you know, what happens over the next few weeks. And that's kind of wild with a team like this has hung four batters <laughs> in eight years at – it's a struggle to figure out what the high water mark is for this team. The five season. game win streak. Maybe it's a five game. Maybe it's Christmas Day against Memphis. Ooh, I like that maybe one. Maybe it's the Boston oh, game. That's a good one too. Milwaukee. Boston Milwaukee game. coming back from Did eight they points lose down. One of the Boston games that. Were yeah, they tight. lost a one at TD Garden. Yeah, yeah but they but won a one at Chase. Game. That was a fun game. Milwaukee. I'm gonna go Milwaukee, with Milwaukee. Yeah, the late down game eight, and then Steph, Steph Curry happened. Call. Yeah, that may be the. I one. happen to be in the building. But how sad is that? Has been. It's not a good luck charm. Madeline's always in the building. I mean, seriously, scratch. In our head after this regular season, how unprecedented would it be for this team to go on a run after that regular season? I mean, even the Rockets, I know a lot of people are comparing this Warriors team as a six seed to the six seed Houston Rockets in 94 95, but I don't think their regular season was like this one. This has been a complete roller coaster for the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, it's been absolutely wild. I can't say that I remember the the Rockets run um, because I was a newborn. Yeah. But <laughs> you're still watching Nebraska but, uh, football. And you're a newborn, yeah, no doubt. I'm, I'm, I'm showing my age. I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but, but uh, it, 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 it has been just crazy, just how up and down this team is. They came in, you know, looking poised to be real contenders and like have a strong title defense. And it just seems like everything. It never. It all fell apart so early. You know, from the. Draymond Green and Jordan Poole altercation in practice at the in training camp, and then the road losses, and it just seems like they could never put it all together for a full forty-eight. And it wasn't until like this this last few weeks of the season that you know they've been talking about this run. Like once we get on a run, that'll that'll be it. Like we'll flip the switch, whatever. And I mean, winning eight of ten, I think you can call that like a mini run, but it just. Uh, it wasn't. In, I wasn't convinced until I would say probably the last few or so weeks of the season that this team could actually come together and figure it out because everyone was relying on you know their their championship pedigree and the experience that Steph Draymond Clay and, and you know I don't want to I don't want to knock that like obviously they have the experience and they can lead this team but it was more so like just the chemistry because like, there was a clear disconnect on the court and it was like the younger guys and the the role players and you know why it wasn't all coming together in the defense that that was my concern it wasn't about those three guys you know we do this for a living you do this for a living and it feels like this is like a Beatles level uh, scrutiny for for this organization and this team that player Steph Curry those guys those stars what do you think's the most from from your perspective what's the most underreported part of this team hmm Good question. There's no angle, right? Like we we dissect Rocco the dog on Clay Thompson. I mean, we dissect two way guys as if they're bench reactions, twenty five million dollar a year players. Like, yeah. is there something that we're like missing the mark on as a fan base, as a media cover? I you mentioned bench re- reactions. I remember that was like a story early on. It's ridiculous. <laughs> that was. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I forgot all I about mean, that. Man, it was yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think. Uh, Jordan Poole and just kind of what he's gone through this season. Uh, it's kind of been rocky. He's had to deal with making adjustments to getting to being more part of the opponent's game plan. Uh, you know, just some of the struggles that he's gone through and kind of picking his brain and seeing where he's at. Obviously, he's an uber confident guy, but um, it, would, it would just be interesting to sit down with him and chat with him about everything that he's gone through this year um, from – Japan all the way up to this point. Um, so maybe maybe his, you know, growth and uh, what he's learned from this last year is something that could be explored. And then also Moses Moody. Mm. I, I expected him to play more than 
he did this season. Um, obviously, he's been playing really well over the last few games, but I I was kind of surprised he didn't get more opportunities uh, throughout the regular season. Matt, before we let you go, you brought up Jordan Poole. Do you think he will open up about this season? you think he'll do that? Because he, you're right, he's had to start, come off the bench, play with all these different combinations. We know what happened in training camp. He's been the, the scapegoat for a lot of people uh, with this fan base and media members at that. He told us about it on Warriors Post Camp a few weeks ago, saying, hey, I'm here to slander. Do you think he'll ever open up about this season and what he's gone through? Honestly, no. Uh, at least not not yet. I right. think it, would, it wouldn't be until, you know, a few years down the line and he was talking to, like, a trusted media person, you know, or a trusted reporter that he felt most comfortable with being honest. But, I, yeah, I don't see him as the type yeah. of person that would necessarily, you know, fill out his, open up his diary and right. read it aloud. He, he's a it, great kid. It's still interesting. It's still worth asking, you know? Yeah, no, he's a great kid. I, I really love him. I love his energy. But he does seem to be a big guarded, especially at the podium and sometimes the medium. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Because he is an no, essential I kid. I like the guy from his rookie year to what he who he – the way he spoke at his introductory press conference and all that, like he's got a lot of insights on a lot of different things. But just about this season, I just I don't expect him to ever well, open up about. Well, it. I would just he, uh, he also just isn't the type of guy to talk about himself. Yes, you know, yeah. like he, he usually when you ask him a question, even if after a big game about his performance, he'll usually deflect and start talking about Wiggins or somebody else that also had a great performance. So I mean, I think that's the other layer to this is that he doesn't. He's not a type of guy that likes to talk about himself. And I, I've always had good interactions with Jordan Poole, mm-hmm. so um, this isn't a knock on him by any means. All right, Madeline. Get ready for it. What are you going to do with your time off? You're going you to get away a little bit? No articles you have to write? What time off? I got an article I got to write today. Uh, I do think I'm going to be off tomorrow, so I'll probably use that day to kind of recharge and reset, maybe do some laundry. There you go. Shasky loves Maybe to do laundry. Maybe go bowling. We'll see. Oh, bowling yeah, or bowling. I don't, know. I don't love to do laundry, <laughs> but there is something that I find uh, relaxing when I'm folding laundry while watching the game. It calms me down a little. <laughs> Just a little. Says no one ever. All right, Madeline, get out of here. Go write your article. Thanks for joining us as always. Thanks for having me, guys. See ya. Anytime. That's Nebraska's uh, finest out of Loyola, Chicago, covering the Go to State Warriors for the Bay Area News Group. Madeline Kenny at Matt Kitty on Twitter.